Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about the Natanya Rubin situation and the Shine situation as well. If you guys do not know, I talked about this about six months ago. Natanya Rubens was the woman who was shot during the club back in 1999 when Shine was there, J-Lo, and P. Diddy. And she came out six months ago to confirm everything that was in Little Rod's lawsuit that she told whoever would listen to her that Diddy was the one who shot her. And basically, Diddy ended up throwing Shine under the bus. He went and got witnesses to say that Shine was a shooter and not Diddy. And so they both spoke about their experiences six months ago. And now they're both talking because now Diddy has been arrested. People are circling back and they want to hear from Natanya to see what she thinks about the situation and shine. And Natanya is basically saying she wants J-Lo arrested. You know, she wants them to reopen this case because J-Lo and Diddy, they lied to the grand jury. Um, Shine is talking about what he went through, you know, as a youngin doing 10 years for a crime that he did not commit. So this entire situation is just sad. We're gonna go ahead and watch the two interviews from six months ago, and then we'll work our way forward. Hey, how you doing? So, hmm, here today about this latest lawsuit with the P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Sean Puffy Combs, whatever you want to call them, lawsuit that has come out involving the producer Little Rod. So basically his last two lawsuits, or last two major lawsuits, um, the one with Cassie, she made mention that Puffy made her carry his guns into nightclubs and wherever they went, and he threatened her to make her feel like she had to do so. And of while there were lots of things of importance, that stood out to me, and I'm gonna tell you why. In this lawsuit with the producer Little Rod, they were both essayed by him and threatened and physically harmed. But in this lawsuit, he appears to be a very young producer to me. But he said something very specific. As a means of threatening him, Puffy said, that's why I shot up the club in New York back in 1999 and let Shine take the fall for it. Let me tell you why that's of utmost importance to me. Because I am the woman who he shot in the face in that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York shooting. I have told everyone ad nauseum since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bullet, I got shot in my face with a nine millimeter, excuse me, nine millimeter hollow point bullet called a cop killer. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow powed in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery to take out part of the bullet fragments that was aspirating into my lungs and try to remove as many bullet fragments as possible testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under, I was screaming, Puffy, pew, pew, me in the face. He testified in the criminal trial. It is in the record. They all knew he did it. Everybody knew he did it. But he paid off the club bouncer named Sharice and all these other people and the club owners with their video to hide the video that's his mo i told everybody that this man almost took my life has traumatized my life has caused undue harm irreparable damage to my life lied his behind off 
I've had all these youngins on the internet harassing me, swearing that I'm making it up that he did it. And look what he did to little Rod. He threatened him. Oh, you don't think I bust my gun? I shot up the club in Club New York and let Shine take the fall for it. I shot them people. Well, well, well. It only took 24, 24 whole years for it to come out. You see this tattoo? This commemorates me getting shot. It took 24 years for him to come out and say it. I've been saying it all along, but y'all pick and choose who y'all want to believe. Oh, baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. Not only did he pew, 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 pew me in the face, he also set off a course of harassment against me for the past 24 years. When I tell you the thing. Do y'all notice what she's saying? Now that's also matching up with what Tiffany Red has said, what the feds have said, that this man uses his power to harass people, to send intermediaries to people, to get them to shut up talking about him. This man is a menace, but for so many years, people made excuses for Diddy. We're gonna keep listening. Things I went through. There was a time in 2017 and 2018 where I got seven flats on my BMW, seven, the same tire, in a two year span, seven on the same tire and they were all new. Every time it happened, I had to get a new tire. I have the pictures to prove it. Harassing me. You wanna know why? Because prior to Cassie, I was the only person to be victimized by him and then to successfully sue him and get paid and he had to pay me out of his pocket he has never gotten over that oh baby you see this rico charge that's about to come this conspiring and pew peering up the club and ruining or attempting to ruin my life as god is my witness i will not stop until you suffer every single iota of punishment until I have every second of recompense that you took for me. For every tear that I had to cry or my children had to cry, I am going to get a million back from you. I will not stop until you pay the price for what you did to my life. And for all you people out there on the internet and in cyberspace and in the far reaches of my life or the perimeters or wherever who always like oh she just saying that to get some hell what you got to say now what you got to say now i had some youngins on the internet that ain't even old enough that weren't even alive when it happened arguing me down cussing me out calling me everything but a child of god go check instagram it's there harassing my life harassing me oh you lying he ain't do that to you you just want clout you just chasing clout what is that to chase clout about how is that clout chase worthy it doesn't even make sense well i guess you, it would make sense in this new generation but you better believe i will have my say i will have my say hashtag having my say hashtag the dopest nerd ever hashtag ebb talks all right, so y'all just heard what Natanya Rubin had to say, and that was six months ago, before Diddy was arrested. She was hitting on the RICO charges. She was hitting on the threats that she's been getting from him over the years. So now we're going to watch what Shine had to say. This was six months ago. After Natanya's video went viral, Shine spoke about the situation as well. So let's go ahead and check this out. It opens wounds um, when you hear... Um, you know, the victim saying that it was Diddy that shot her. That is what is the most remarkable. Oh, you didn't see that? I saw it. Okay. And that was triggered by a lawsuit from a producer that produced on the Love album who is making accusations. And in those accusations, he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting 
And that is what stands out to me the most because, I, you know, I've done my best to put it behind me and to move forward. Uh, and so, um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Um, but my political enemies and, you know, detractors tried to make me into, you know, this criminal. Um, but everyone knew that I was a young kid that took the fall. Everyone knew that that was the story. I'm just saying that I maintained my innocence all this time. I said I was defending myself. I didn't get into who did what. Um, but the victim is telling you who did what. And another, I, I understand that there are other witnesses. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that. But it does open wounds. And um, certainly, I am relieved that uh, people are saying what the truth is. That, you know, I did not uh, shoot um, those people. I maintain that I never shoot nobody, um, that there were other guns there. I always said that. That has not changed. And that is the testimony that came out. Um, fragments were never removed. Uh, so there was never any forensic testing to say who it was. Uh, but the victims are vindicating me. Uh, witnesses are vindicating me. But I have, I have moved on. I, I'm not trying to relive that. Uh, and, and so I am appreciative of whatever contributions uh, Diddy has made um, to help the people of Belize. Uh, I wish him well. I pray for him and I pray for the alleged victims. And, and if, if it is true, may justice be served. If it is not, um, it, it, it's a tragedy because a, a, a global icon um, would have been destroyed. All right, so you guys just heard what Shine had to say. So like I said, that was six months ago when all of this first broke. So now um, Natanya Rubin is speaking out and she's saying that she wants the case be opened because J-Lo and Diddy lied to the grand jury. Um, so she's stating her case and then Shine is also going to be questioned about the latest Diddy arrest. So we're gonna go ahead and watch those two clips now. I think you even said it to, to the doctor that night, right? I said it immediately. I literally watched them pull out the guns. I've had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose. I was facing them directly. I watched everything occur and had described it, you know, vehemently to all parties involved. I think in our society, we, we are, we have respectability politics. There are people who want to be adjacent to power or celebrity or money. And there's a hierarchy of respectability because his name was more notable, he was believed rather than a victim who gave a first hand account. By the grace of God, I survived. Yeah, and this was also a different time. I mean, things were very, very different in 1999. I mean, did you <laughs> sense right from the beginning that no one believed you? Well, I, I don't think that was on my mind. I think first and foremost, I'm a mother. I'm a mother of three at the time. I was a mother of two. And just surviving and getting home to my children was of the utmost importance to me, being whole and being able to mother them. That was, you know, primary on my list. Uh, I didn't have any reason to believe that someone, you know, to think that someone would not believe me. But as things unfolded, it was a very short period of time where I realized that's what in fact was happening. So, as I mentioned, Diddy has denied being the one who pulled the trigger. Um, but this is interesting, Natanya. Rodney Jones, also known as Little Rod, uh, is now suing Diddy for sexual harassment. That's something that's been in the headlines for the last couple of days. And there's a very interesting quote from his lawsuit that relates back to you that I want to read because it sort of ties all of this together. Um, and it says, Jones claims in the lawsuit, Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. He shared that artist, that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, AKA JLo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. So now you have Little Rod in this new lawsuit saying that Diddy told him that he actually was responsible. I mean, what did you think when you read that? Well, I was incensed for a number of reasons. First and foremost, 
for the past quarter of a century, he's vehemently denied that he was responsible, even though I knew wholeheartedly, and as so many others who were in the club that night, we all knew he was responsible. A lot of people were afraid for their safety, justifiably so. I mean, the history that has occurred in the last 25 years proves that they were justified in being afraid, but I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid because I still bear the, I have nine bullet fragments with my, remaining in my face. So when I saw that, that count 128, that's actually count 128 of the lawsuit. When I saw that on a podcast that was analyzing all of the counts, I knew I had to speak. I had no intention of going viral. I was just getting it out of me. I have a mantra, having my say. There was a time uh, a few years ago where I had a talk radio show called Having My Say. And that's very important to me. I believe everyone is entitled to have their say. Far too often we don't hear people or listen. And so I just wanted to get it out of me because it was like an audible deep breath that I needed to take. And I made the TikTok video not expecting it to go viral. Went to pick up my daughter, came back home, and she's like, I'm, and I literally told her, I'm like, well, you're probably going to see it tomorrow. I made a video on TikTok. Maybe a hundred people will see it. By the time we got home, she said, Mommy, it was 70,000 people. And I could not believe it. But it was time. It was time for me to speak. I'd stayed quiet for 25 years. It was my time to speak. Yeah, we don't know yet what's going to happen with the P. Diddy situation. Obviously, again, he hasn't been arrested. There's clearly a very big federal investigation happening now. But I'm thinking back to other cases, R. Kelly, Jeffrey Epstein. When they started to dig, uh, all sorts of stuff came to the surface. They reopened old investigations. Would you like to see the investigation involving you getting shot at that club be reopened? Absolutely. Absolutely. The irony is there was a grand jury uh, we had to. We all had to go and speak at the grand jury. J Lo testified at the grand jury, as did many other people. It needs to be reopened because if that is in fact the case, she carried the gun in, and she lied to the grand jury. It needs to be reopened. My shooting, ironically, the night I went into the. I think it needs to be open. Lock this crazy bitch J Lo up right along with Diddy. She's trash, and she's been able to skate um, for years since this situation she was able to reinvent herself and be you know hollywood's darling but j-lo was a little thug back in the day don't let that you know what i'm saying that shit fool you now now it's coming out that she's a nasty individual she's always been a nasty individual and wendy williams clocked that t years ago about j-lo bringing in the gun and handing it to diddy and then, you know, once stuff got hot, she was able to run, you know, towards Ben Affleck and, you know, be a white Latina again. But when she needed all that, but, you know, when she needed that hood, but when she needed that hood persona and needed to mix and mingle with hip hop, it was all good her running around with Diddy. So I agree with her. It should be reopened. And if they find out that J-Lo, who indeed lied to the grand jury, she should face consequences because if this was a regular person and not a celebrity, and it came out later that they lied to the grand jury, they'd be in jail. That's the same thing that happened to Lil' Kim. She lied to the grand jury, and guess what? She did a whole year in jail behind it. So why is J-Lo any different? The uh, club, I had a comb in my pocketbook called a rat tail comb. People in the beauty industry or people that use that type of comb would be all too familiar. It's just a comb. It can't do anything to harm anyone. And I had the very security officer who lied during the trial, Sharice, I, I forget her last name, but she literally took it from me and kind of pushed me like, you can't take this thing, this is a weapon. She let other people in with us. If someone had combed me 24 years ago, I'd be fine. You wouldn't even know my name. But having been shot by someone that was allowed to come into the, the gun when I couldn't bring in a comb, I would absolutely unequivocally like the case real. It needs to be reopened. And the saddest part for me is, had people taken what I said more seriously and listened more intently, 24 years worth of people probably would not have had to suffer. All right, so you guys just heard what Natanya Rubin had to say. So now we're going to listen to what Shine had to say. He was interviewed yesterday in Belize. So we're going to go ahead and check that out now. When I was an 18-year-old kid, um, you know, just wanting to do nothing other than make my mother proud and make Belize proud and um, do what all of us want to do, be recognized for our talent and uh, take over the world. Uh, I was defending him and he turned around 
and called witnesses to testify against me and he contributed, he pretty much sent me to prison. So that is the context by which you must always describe that relationship. Yes, I forgave, I moved on, but let us not pretend as if I was in Miami for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, I saw and you I spent a birthday with him once. I, went, I saw a birthday cake. I went again to do a charity event for impoverished youth uh, in London. Um, so let us not lose sight of what the cold hard facts are. This was not someone uh, who I vacationed with and who he and I enjoyed this great intimate relationship of brotherhood. This is someone who destroyed my life and who I forgave and who I moved on and for the better interest of Belize uh, because he was in a position at that time to give scholarships and to maybe invest. Um, I would not uh, deny uh, attempting to bring the investment to Belize and to bring the contributions to education to Belize. But don't distort it as if, you know, he and I were boom ballet. Uh, this is someone that destroyed my life. But do I take any joy or any satisfaction with what he is going through? Um, absolutely not. I, I, I am different than maybe other people. No one needs to fail for me to succeed. No one, say, no one needs to suffer for me. In your, yeah. at, the, at the height of your professional relationship, or uh, thereafter through the reconciliation, when he was an instrumental part of promoting you through Revolt Media, did you, were you aware of these freak off events? And uh, were you aware of them? Did you have any participation in them? Oh my goodness, Jules Vasquez. <laughs> Jules Vasquez. Were you aware of that? Jules Vasquez. <laughs> Were you aware of the free cops? So I, I, I Yo, I love the news in Belize. They don't care. They're not beating around the bush. Sir, were you or were you not a part of the free cops, okay? You were there with Diddy at one point in time. You were signed to his record label. He, he rocked with you. We need to know the T. Were you there? Did you see Dilly hanging off of the ceiling? Did you see J-Lo getting ran through? Please spill the tea now, sir, okay? I had nothing to do with Sean Combs' a personal life, no interaction. That level, everything was strictly on a professional level. All right, so you guys just heard what Shine had to say about the situation. So like I said, you know, all of his skeletons are coming out the closet. The chickens are coming home to roost. And I'm glad that Shine is finally being, you know, it can never make up for the years that he lost in prison, especially, you know, he went in at like 18, 19. So it can never make up for those years. Those are critical years in a young man's life. But I'm glad that, you know, people are now knowing the truth, that he was not the one who caused that shooting. And I feel like J-Lo should face consequences. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy story. How do you guys feel about what Latanya had to say about the situation? How do you guys feel about what Shine had to say? Do you think that they'll ever reopen this case? You know, because again, Shine was found guilty. He did his time. Do you think they would even be bothered trying to reopen it to try to, you know, give J-Lo any type of consequence? So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys hit the video with a like. Feel free to share the video and I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sir, your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like.